Greetings and salutations. I love it when things run out of their warranty period. Now, you're probably thinking I'm crazy when I say that because who wants things to be out of warranty? Well, I like it because that means I get to take them apart and fix them as opposed to sending it back to the manufacturer and getting charged up the wazoo. So this is the robot that cleans the house. Yeah, I love the thing. Yeah, I'm lazy. Yeah, get over it. Now, the side brush here has stopped working. And the reason for that is because the rubber band that drives it has broken. It's simple. It's not a major issue. It's just a little rubber band that drives the pulley. And that needs to be replaced. So I'm going to show you how to take this sucker apart and fix it. No big deal. To start with, remove the dustbin. Set it aside. Now I'll try to do this so you can see what I'm talking about here. Right here is a power switch. We will switch that off for safety's sake. And while we're there, we'll remove the little black cover piece I'll put over here that protects the USB port. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this bumper guard here on the front. Now this is kind of a tricky one. Now I'll try to do this so you can see it here. And actually I'm gonna go different order on that. I'm gonna start with the side brush comes off. Pull that off. And of course the brush assembly. Now it's a little easier to access the bumper here. To get the bumper off, what you do is pry one side and push it forward. And you think it's going to break, but you just keep gradually and gently pushing it forward until it pops off. Now that's off. Let's set that aside. Now, this is the important part. For safety's sake here, you want to remove the battery. That's got a lot of energy in these batteries, and you want to make sure to pull them out so you don't... A, shock yourself, and B, you know, burn your house down. Either one of which would be bad. Now, these two screws, which I just did here, are actual screws. Phillips or standard, doesn't matter. It will work with either one. Battery comes out, and then inside here is where the wiring harness for that battery goes to. And I can't quite do this on camera because my fingers are a little too fat to get down in there and have room for the camera. So that comes out. Battery is off. Now, what we have now are 10 torque screws holding this whole thing together. I'm going to start with the two on the top, and those two are right here and right here. Now, I'm going to do it so you can't quite see me on this one, but this way I can see what I'm doing. So I'll just unscrew those two torques and throw a magnet on my tool to help hopefully pick that up. There we go. There we go, there it fell out. And now there's going to be eight of them on this side. What we've got here, we have one here, one here, one in here, one over here, one here, one here, one here, one here. Now I'm going to shut up for a minute and stop talking, and I will speed this up to the magic of editing so you don't have to listen to me while I babble on and remove these eight screws. Now to get those eight screws out, we'll let gravity do the work. Two, four, five. Okay, it looks like I'm missing a couple. Six, seven. And there's number eight, still in the hole. So there we go, all screws are accounted for. Next step to remove this are the plastic tabs here and here. Just kind of pop those, and you can see it just naturally pops right apart there. Now what we'll do is we'll carefully flip it over, keeping that together. And the reason we do it that way is I'm going to lift this up so you can see what I'm talking about in here, is you'll see there's a wiring harness right in here. This has to be removed before you can pull the rest of this lid off. There we go, that comes off. This was obviously the wiring harness, plugs in right next to the motor here. We'll set that aside. 
the inside. <laughs> okay. Obviously, if you're going to do this, be warned, this will violate your warranty or avoid your warranty. I don't care, it's already out of warranty, so no big deal. Now, where we need to get to is the motor right here. Getting to the motor is easy. However, two of the three screws are super easy to get to. One is buried underneath the circuit board. So what we have to do is we have to get underneath the circuit board. Now, they made it hard as they possibly could. So what you'll see is all these little wires right here. All of these wires have to be disconnected. Now I like to use a, something very small or a pair of pliers to gradually hold these while I do that. And I'm just going to go ahead and unplug all of these little connectors, which are microscopic and really hard to get. I mean, if only I were a 12-year-old Chinese girl, this would be a lot easier. Of course, they only know how to put them together. I don't want to take them apart, right? Okay, we're getting there. Only a couple more. Bada bing. And bada boom. Okay, that is all of those pieces there. Now, there's one more sensor, the side bumper sensor here. This one's the easiest. It just slides straight out. That whole wiring harness can be pulled aside. Now, this wiring bundle right here, you'll need to get it out from there. Leave this side connected. You don't have to do, undo this side. Just do it so that it's free so you can get room to work here. Now, the circuit board is held in with two plastic tabs here and here. And we'll just gently pop that one there and gently pop this one here. There we go. Now you'll see this board comes up. Now it's also still held in by two retention tabs here and here. To do that, you just slide it gently with a little bit of wiggle. There we go. Just like that. You're not going to take it off. You're just going to loosen it up a little bit so you can access the motor here. So I'm going to take my Torx again, same thing, T10 Torx. And I'm going to start with a hard screw. This is the whole reason you have to take the circuit board half out is to get to this one screw. Brilliant engineering. And that was sarcasm. Okay, almost got that sucker and that sucker is out. There it is. That's that one. And there's two more here. These ones you can actually get to very easily. Not a problem. Two. And three. Okay. That's how you get to that. Now you lift this up, pull the motor assembly right out, and then bada bing, bada boom. Now, you'll see this one actually has a belt on it. This was a belt I tried out, made from a bicycle inner tube. It didn't work. So I'm just going to take that little sucker right off, throw it away. So now what you've got here is the motor assembly. And I had another rubber band sitting here, which has disappeared. So go ahead and pause. Ta-da! Through the magic of editing, there's a rubber band that I somehow dropped and it disappeared. But we'll get this on here. So what this is, is just two simple pulleys. Um, this one can actually be removed if you ever wanted to for some crazy reason. Don't know why you would, but it does come. <laughs> and then we're just going to take our rubber band and put it right over those. And make sure it runs freely, no obstructions, no nothing. That's it. That's all it took to fix this. So what we're going to do now is put this back into place. Should be a little bit easier here. There we go. There we go. It's always easier doing this when you're doing it for yourself and not for a camera. Go figure. Trying to do this backwards is tricky. So now I'm going to start with a hard screw. This is that crazy one underneath the circuit board here. There we go. Now the astute amongst you may have noticed that I have a small stack of magnets attached to my tool here. Right here. It's a little trick for you. What you can do, if you have a non-magnetic tool, but still steel, you just attach that, and now the screw holds. Which is really useful when you're trying to thread screws into tiny little spots way down, you know, nooks and crannies. Just like this robot. Okay. And the third screw here. And you'll see that I'm not torquing down on this. I'm not, crack. you know, it's not go to hear the crack and back off a quarter turn. Nope, just ever so slightly snug, good enough. That's all it needs if you're going into plastic. Okay, next step, we're going to put this circuit board back into place. Now, 
One thing you should be aware of here is it loves to snag on this area right in here. Now that's important if you don't snag that because it, the buttons won't work if you do. And it's ever so subtle. So we're gonna get these tabs here and here in first. Okay, two tabs are in. Now we're gonna gently rotate the whole board down. And I'm gonna use a little cookie poker here and make sure that the wires under there are all the way over. And we're going to gently secure that side. And same thing over here, gently secure the tab. Now the whole thing is down nice and even and there's no weird pressure on this which is very very important because if you have too much pressure as in this little wiring harness gets caught underneath the board here this button will not work now this little button right here is actually the home button it pokes down this little itty bitty dot here this white dot touches that blue dot microscopic little suckers but they line up and they won't allow you to actually work in it that way if you don't have that lined up that home button won't work. So I learned that the hard way. I had to take it apart a couple times, put it back together, but got it eventually. Now, we'll get these wires here tucked back in. Okay, those wires are tucked in. Now the fun part, this little cluster here. These are so easy. You wouldn't think they're easy, but they really are because they line up only one direction. It's the way they came out and the harness just kind of keeps it all in the right spot. So. It's actually easier to get these back on than it is to get them off. But again, still, this would be a lot easier if I was a young Chinese girl with little itty bitty fingers. Not the stereotype, but it's just, they're really good at making things. Okay, we're going to put this back together there. One more here. One more here. And the final one, of course, is the sensor. That's the easiest one, and it just drops in right there. That's that. Just tuck that down a little bit, make sure it's nice and clear. And we're actually gonna make sure that's well down in this little channel here. There we go. All those wires are nicely tucked away. All these wires over here are nicely tucked away. Board is nice and flat, not any pressure. Nothing is gonna get pinched when I start putting this back together now. So the next step, this lid here. Now, I can't do this and still do it for the camera, so I'm gonna set him to do this off camera, but this goes into here. And I'm just going to tuck that in. Bing, and bam, boom. Okay, that sucker is on. Now, back first. Kind of line it up, give her a little wiggle. And there's the tab. You just heard them engage there. Now we're left with here are the tabs in the front. And we'll just gently, boom, that's that. That's together now. Now we're going to start by putting a couple screws here on the top. Again, magnet to hold the screw helps a lot. Of course, it doesn't help me from being clumsy. And that just threads right back in. And again, just barely, barely snug. Do not over torque screws going into plastic. That's bad. So slightly snug, flip it over, and we have eight more on the bottom here. So two up here. Bitty, bitty holes. And again, I'll probably fast forward this so you don't have to listen to me babble on as I thread a whole bunch of screws into itty bitty pockets and struggle with it. Those are all back in. Next step, the battery. Don't shock yourself, but it only goes in one way, so it's not that hard. The hardest part about it, though, is I can't show you because my fingers are way too big to get down in this itty bitty spot. This 
this is not supposed to be a hard part. This is supposed to be the easy part. You know, the battery is supposed to be user replaceable, unlike everything on the inside. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to flip this around, try to use my other fingers here, because I can't quite get her. There we go. I just lined it up and I'll just use the end of my Torx to push straight down until I hear the click and then click, it's in. Okay, battery's in. Cover goes on. And again, these are the oddballs that are not Torx. Everything else on here is Torx, except for these two. I guess they don't assume people are gonna have Torx tools laying around, but at least I didn't use like anti-tamper torques or some crap like that. Okay, next step is going to be the bumper guard here on the front. This just goes on, just kind of you know, wiggle it and, and shimmy it, and you'll kind of feel it. You'll feel where it uh, has room and where it doesn't. And we're just going to kind of, da, 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 da. there we go. A little bit of stretch by pulling it apart works fine. And at this point here, just a pop, and it's in, and it works perfectly. Flip our back over. Go ahead and insert the brush. Brush cover. The wheel, or the little side brush that we just fixed. Flip it right side up. Going to insert this little bugger here, which is again the dust cap for the USB port, which is probably one of the hardest things to actually get in on this entire unit. I have no idea why they made that little piece so hard to get, but they did. Okay, then we're gonna go power on, insert the dust bin back into place, and this robot should now work. And as you see, the home button pressed and it came alive, at least the lights lit up. It'll probably make some noises here in a few moments, but we're gonna test it. That's gonna be the next step. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully that wasn't too shocking of an edit here. This is the side brush right here. This is what wasn't working. And now we're gonna see if it works. And I push the magic button, and guess what? It works! It works! Yay! Thanks for joining me. See you next time.